So today I wanted to prove that a finite integral domain is a field. And first I want to talk about the definition of an integral domain because um, so integral domain is a commutative ring without zero divisors. The problem though is that uh, sometimes some professors don't include one as a part of definition for a ring or integral domain. Uh, I actually made another video where I discussed this theorem uh, with that definition. So the definition where you don't include one or you don't require one. But in this video, I will use the more common definition, I think, which is that you require one to be in a ring or integral domain. Uh, so basically, uh, I will assume that unity is in the domain as well. Okay, so for the proof, since we, uh, let's say D is a finite integral domain. And obviously not all finite, uh, sorry, not all integral domains are fields. They're not the same things. Uh, but here, the keyword is finite. So if you have a finite integral domain, that's a field. And if you think about the definition for integral domain and a field, uh, it's pretty clear that all you have to do is to show that for all A in D, if A is a non-zero element, then there exists B in D such that AB is one. Uh, the reason for that is it's commutative, so you just need to think about AB equals one, and then as long as every non-zero element is a unit, we're done. So let's get to the proof. So let's think about this group, D star. for some k. So here we are thinking about uh, all the non-zero elements. All the non-zero elements. Non-zero elements. In D. So if you create a set that is almost D, but you just get rid of that zero, every non-zero element in D will be in this D star. This D star. And what I'm gonna do is we want to show, so we want to show this. But, so let's just say um, so to show that, we just need to show the same thing for each of these a1, a2, and up to ak, because those are the non-zero elements in D. So uh, without loss of generality, let's just prove it for a1. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is first, is to create this set called a1d star and what I'm gonna do is essentially just multiply a1 to each element and I claim that this set claim d star equals a1 d star and the reason for that is uh, first uh, D has no zero divisors 
So a1 d star has to be a set of non-zero elements. So it has to be a subset of d star. And here, it looks like we have k elements, right? But we're not sure if they're duplicates. If there are no duplicates here, that means we have a1 d star has k different non-zero elements. Then that means like it's exactly the same as d star. Because a1 d star is after all a subset of d star. But if a1 d star has the exact same number of elements as d star, it's got to be the same set. If it's a subset and if it has the same number of elements, then it has to be the same set. Um, so the proof is actually pretty simple. Uh, let i j such that a i a one a i equals uh, a one a j. Then this would imply that a one equals a one. Then again, this is an integral domain, so it has no zero divisors. A1 is a non-zero element that implies AI equals AJ. And that means I is J. So this means that A1 D star has K elements. And then by combining these two, we can say that d star is a one d star. So now the interesting thing is a one is in d star, obviously, because that's how we picked a one. A one is in d star. And then this guy is the same as a one d star. This would imply that a one equals uh, oops, no, uh, sorry, this was, I'm going the wrong direction. Uh, sorry about that. So, going back. D star was the set of all non-zero elements in D. So what that means is 1 has to be in it because we are using the definition where a ring has to have one, the unity. Uh, then we have a1 d star. We have, we know that a1 d star, a1 d star is this guy. And d star, we said that these two are the same thing. And the one, the number, the, the element one is in d star, so it has to be in a1 d star as well. What that means, though, is that this means there exists i such that a1, a i is 1. So this means a i has to be uh, the multiplicative inverse. of a1. So here we just proved that a1 uh, is a1 has a multiplicative inverse. And obviously the exact same argument can be applied to any elements, any non-zero elements in D. So we show that for every non-zero element, there exists an inverse. So D has to be D, this finite integral domain, this has to be a field.